Hello everyone. Today at Champaka, we're very excited to be hosting the book launch of Wali, published by HarperCollins. Translated from Malayalam, Wali tells the tale of four generations of people who made their home in the land of Vayanad, a place that is rich with folklore and the culture of its indigenous people. We have with us Sheila Tomi, the author of Wali, and Jeshri Kalatil, the translator. They will be in conversation with Arunava Sinha. Here is a little bit about our speakers today. Sheila Tomi is a novelist, a short story writer, and a script writer. Wali is her debut novel for which she's been awarded the Cherokee Award for Malayalam Literature in 2020. Jeshri Kalatil is an author and translator. She shared the JCB Prize for Literature in 2020 with S. Harish for her translation of his novel, Mustache. Arunava Sinha is also an author and translator. He's translated 70 books of fiction, poetry, and nonfiction from Bengali to English and English to Bengali. He is also the co-director of the Ashoka Center for Translation and an associate professor of creative writing at Ashoka University. To tell you a little bit about Champaka Bookstore, we're an independent women-run bookstore, children's library, and cafe. Our aim is to bring diverse stories and perspectives for our readers through our books and events. We have an online store that ships across India where you can find our entire collection of books. So welcome to all three of you. We're looking forward to the conversation and over to you, Arunava. Thank you. Um, big thanks to Champaka for organizing this. And it's a real joy to be able to talk to both of you, Sheila and Jayasri. As usual, I'm a fan of your book. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, there are so many things I, I would, but I think perhaps answers to all of them will not be fair because readers really need to read this uh, magnificent book for themselves rather than get everything prepackaged for them. But I'm going to start by asking uh, to tell us a little bit about your literary journey to your debut novel. How you became a writer, how you got here, and so on. Yeah. Thank you, Champaka, and thank you, Harper Collins. And uh, I delight to be here today with you, Arunava and Jayasri, uh, for the launching of our English Valley, whereas my original book is here with me. Yeah. Uh, for my literary, literary journey, actually, I started writing uh, even during my childhood. As a child, I was very fond of books. I was reading, uh, you know, fiction, non-fiction books. My teachers and my parents, who were teachers, teach me a lot of books. And in school and college, I was representing my school and college in this state and all. But, you know, all of uh, stopped over there after, you know, uh, getting into a job, uh, getting into a married life and uh, my life entirely, you know, like it was uh, to literature. And after my children uh, grew up only, I could focus on my uh, passion or I can call, follow my passion. I used to uh, write short stories and, uh, you know, articles in magazines and uh, weeklies. And uh, I published one collection of short stories uh, in 2000. After that, you know, I was uh, eager to write about my land. If, uh, father, my chachan, used, used to tell me, write about your land, write about people. And, uh, but I could do it only after his departure. And it's finally here. So, how long has this novel been? Actually, Wally was there in my mind uh, even for more than a day. Uh, you know, yeah, I was living with these people uh, since my childhood. But, you know, I started to write only in 2015, as I said before, uh, after my dad departure. Um, it took uh, three long years, this novel. And... Uh, and also the preparation, um, like all during the writing period, I was preparing for them. Like I just had a plot on this, 
and I didn't have, you know, even all the characters in mind, but all the characters and all the places were there in my mind, deep within my mind. And uh, once I started, I just, uh, you know, followed the course that, uh, you know, came. I, I, I can fully believe that the novel has been, has, was born within you and, and lived within you for a long time. This is, this is an incredibly ambitious novel to start your literary journey, but what a beginning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, um, Jayasri, I read that you found, you came across this novel and by now I've learned to trust your eyes so much. Uh, I know that anything you've trans I start reading is going to be truly wonderful. So will you tell us what, how you found this novel, what your reaction was on reading it, and at which point you decided that, I mean, I know what it's like for a translator because you're almost reading with an eye on translating. So how did all that? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, every time I go home, I do a tour of all the bookstalls I get to in Calicut, which is the Korikur, which is the nearest city to where I am. 2020, early 2020 is when before COVID is when I was there and I went to a bookshop and just found the book. I particularly look up uh, writings by women writers in Kerala because I, I do think the literary field is a bit with men and you know public screens itself. So I saw this name, Sheila Tommy, I've never heard before. But while he, again, read a few pages, you know, as I do, I actually read page 69 of any book I pick up in a bookstore. That's my thing. Really? Yeah. Page 69. That's what I read. <laughs> Is that the page where you make your decision? No, I was born in 69. So that's oh, right. So is this book meant for me or not? So, and then, you know, completely captivated. So, of course, I bought it and took it home and I read it once. And then I brought it here. Of course, then COVID happened. And, you know, so I then contacted Sheila via messenger because I didn't know her saying that I would like to translate it because what struck me was of course the story and the the canvas of it which is amazing and there have there been many novels based in Vinard before um, but this was this was somewhat different from all of those novels because there was something very personal about this book and you could you could say that you know, there's some some personal investment in the story and the way it was written. My concern was that this language is very lyrical and very romantic. I haven't got a romantic bone in my body. So I I was a bit concerned, how do I bring that, you know, into the translation? But uh, hopefully I have managed at least uh, to a certain extent, I hope. But yeah, I mean, there was no way that I was going to somebody else translate this book let's put it that way <laughs> i know that feeling and, and translations will make you who you're not the, every book changes you right in some small way no doubt about that yes i i am truly envious of you jesse because not only because of your translation skills but also because you have this fantastic field of of, of original work which you can dip into i mean the literature that's coming out of is extraordinary now extraordinary can I ask each of you to read a short passage from the book, perhaps first in English and then in Malayalam? If you don't have any Malayalam, we'll get a sense of what they're listening to. Okay. Okay, so this is not page... This is actually page 67. <laughs> that Sheila and I... <laughs> no, no, that's fine. We'll just... So it, it's it's not... It's not going to tell you much of the story, but it is it is an example... Sheila's writing, I think, and this is why I thought we should read this because th that lyrical um, voice that has is represented in this passage. When Anankuti crossed the th threshold of the arrogant mansion with her auspicious right foot first, she was thrown from the haven of music and symphony. Shrank into the circle drawn by Ivachan's mother Teridiyama's pointing index finger, she imagined that she could hear the soothing notes of her Appan's harmonium and the gentle rhythms of her brother's tabla. Tearfully, she forced the song that rose in her throat deep into the corners of her heart. The torrential downpours of Parkitagam, the bawling rains of Pilar, the bone searing cold of December, it was all unfamiliar. 
Even stranger were the Vyanad and ways and habits. Drenched and shivering when Annamkutti entered the orchards with the black coffee and rice for the workers, thousands of leeches lay in wait with their blood-sucking mouths. Three or four years passed and yet Annamkutti did not conceive. Tirudhyamma called her machi, sterile. I made fun of her in front of the neighbors. Even as Annamkutti tread water and gasped for her air in a sea of sorrow, she became pregnant and gave birth to their firstborn, a boy, Luca Ivan, who looked exactly like his father. Happily, she gave thanks, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. Thank you. Sheila. Chapter 8, Annankutti Marna Mata. Aprakaram, a hungarathil nearly nilkana, Gamendan Malgele cana, Annankutti, Valadagal which Kairi one another. Harmonium, Tabalium, Sangido Murguna, Sorgatinina, Ugri Shasanagal and Naragatrike, Valicha Repudi Adam Abbe. I watch and Emma, Teradide, June to Viral Marakina Vatakinuli, Padini Kurumbo, Duri and No Idina, Athan, Harmonium, Vaikinadu. Punyani at a very little Tabali, Talamadanadam, Sopnathil Kano, Kanu Nanayu, Tondail Wing and the Partigal, Anangutti, Manasil Rudd, Adachivitu, Poetriana, Karkida, Aladali Karina, Tulamada, Marangochina, December, Parija the Mairinilla, Unu, Adanekal, Abarija the Mairinu, Vainad and Vidigal, Shilana, Nyar Nadal, Poet, Nedi, Nelipurite, Merik, Alek, Arakir, Idikil. Elam Elam, Odin at the chain of Vinad and Pinningale, Angala Podiana Adi Madim Nokin another. Mele Mele, Annangutim, Elam Elam Swaitamaki. Vasha Munal Kainitum, Annangutti Gerthava the Isla. Agial, Ivach and Dama, Terdi, Avalamachi and Adichevicanum, Ail Karikal Kimunich, Abamani the Akan, Ulsachu. As Angada Pathin Dale, Epuro, Annangutti Gerthan the Riche, Cardinal Putrani Germanali. Annilicun the Livach and the Chai. Luca Ivan, who jadanai, and the Kastadagal, Avsaniki and Kala Maikino, Aval Studigidam Alavichu. Shakta Naivan, Valia Karino Chitrikino, Aven Shakta is in Hasanatil in the Takim, Mini the Re Uyurtagim. Thank you. That really is beautiful. And I think sometimes it helps not to understand a language because then you can listen to the sounds and that makes a big impact. What's um, your novel? And I'll novel belongs to both of you since I read it in English. Is that um, it's vast and complex and complicated and rich in all that is going on? But at no point did I feel that drawing away from the story. The story is there, even when you are not directly taking the act thing. That, that's fantastic. And is that. Did it, did it come to you organically? Was it your natural way or did you actually do a style, Sheila? Um, truthfully, uh, truly speaking, it came out organically, but it was difficult as well because I had too many things to combine. As you know, you know, I am writing on Vyanad, which is, uh, Vyanad is a place of folklore. I need to include the myths and folklore. I wanted to tell the story of the Aboriginal people who are fighting for Wali, who were fighting for Wali once. That means wages. And uh, nowadays they are fighting that is a piece of land. I wanted to tell the story of the people, um, the migrate, my, migrants there. And I wanted to tell the story of the nature, how it has been changed. There are too many things. I really wanted to uh, tell too many things and I don't know how to, uh, you know, incorporate everything. But, you know, I think I um, had been a, an engineering student and engineering mind somehow helped me to put things in order. I, I, I believe so. Can you, can you explain a little more? That's so fascinating. <laughs> Um, you know, I am a, um, an engineering graduate. Actually, okay. not what a graduate. I have now 
that that is uh, in our you know in our time i engineering electrical engineering course electrical. and i was a very small student but you know um, once i got the corporation of india in the final year of engineering i just uh, you know uh, gave uh, studies and joined uh, lic but mm. that uh, you know uh, the the thing for the engineering create and creative power i think engineers are very good creator and that creative mind was there and maybe uh, that's why uh, i that helped me that's it and um, also it was a struggle like you know so, uh, to uh, too many combined so i don't know uh, what to throw and what to take and it was it was really a tedious task but it was at the same time i enjoyed doing that i uh, yeah very easy to fall into the trap when you are when you want to write about a very big to start yeah. withdrawing and start writing from 20000 feet and 1000 feet you know you start doing these sweeping stories but you you give you're still actually telling the stories of the individuals the characters which yeah. is what i found absolutely fantastic it, tell us a little bit about the title i believe the word valley means many different things you mentioned two but i believe it has other meanings as well yeah valley in jaisri explain it uh, in detail because yes and because um yes the 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 word has many meanings um in a way things can be read in this book as you know like so that the title is completely apt so valley can mean a vine a climbing plant as that's one of the meanings valley means earth valley also means young woman uh, valley also mean uh, in one at one point in history what was the name given to daily wages usually given as a measure of paddy to people and that was the practice of exploit making people work um, in what is technically their land but which other people have taken over and then ma- make them work there and all you get in return is a a very small portion a mesh that and so there's all of those things and shila's story engages with all of these things i mean it, there are so many young women out the book whose stories are embedded in the larger stories from real young women like tessa or when susan was young or whatever to um, he- clore and goddesses and all the rest of it and it is all about earth um it is all about ages or the practice of feudalism and the pra- you know what happened to the adivasi were you know in the forest etc and the story climbs like a like a vine you know it spreads i, I think there is somewhere there is a sentence towards the beginning of the book where um, tessa thinks so um way of telling the story amma uh, it's like a, it's like a mother plant or like a mother that grows with these stories so it's 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 a, it's a completely fascinating yeah and like the vine it really wraps itself around you i mean you know this is a novel that actually you need to read slowly you can't race through it but at the same time even from it as a reader i never felt disconnected so it it, it clearly wrapped itself it's very rare that, that you know something comes upon you and like this that's what i always feel it doesn't happen through conscious effort and and strategy and all the time right did you no, feel sort I, of just when you were writing uh, sorry i didn't get the last did you feel kind of possessed uh, you know driven by force within yourself yeah of course like that even i told you no and the, the plot was written on only three pages mm-hmm. and i even didn't have this in mind but once i started writing as i said earlier you know it was my father's wish that i should write about my people and uh, there was some you know unknowingly i was characters and even uh, you know some people after publishing the book ask me how did you know about <laughs> like it was their personal uh, but you know like there was a kind of force which uh, you know drove me through the story annoyingly 
but okay so i'm going to be the point of inquisitive now which is that you described your life you know you, you after your electrical engineering education you joined and then you got married and then you had children and you weren't thinking of writing and when you describe a term you tend to think of it as homebound doing your stuff um, not as someone who's actually got this very deep and intimate relationship with the space around them and the vast landscape and uh, the people and the flora and the fauna not just a, with people it's the structure of the earth the geological structure structures everything how did all this come into your life actually you know for 15 years i was living in the in the place there you know which is mentioned uh, in the novel that kaluvel is not uh, my village but i know it is every village in western ghat but uh, my parents were teachers my grandparents you know, farmers. They migrated from uh, Tiruvidanthu in 1950s. So in my childhood, I heard all kinds of stories of their struggle, uh, you know, uh, for survival and uh, myths and the folklore uh, with forest, river, land, and everything like that. And, uh, you know, uh, when I started writing novel, I just spoke to my uh, because some point something you know which is not clear to me like after 15 years um, I say you know um, after marriage I, uh, uh, I went to um, Abu Dhabi first and then to uh, and I was totally disconnected only leave uh, vacation I am going to uh, my land but uh, for when I started writing the novel I um, I read a lot written on why not and actually what i have been seeing in my childhood i again i revised through the books and uh, you know like all the flora for and the politics and the history everything i think the research the through research only i could get those things into my book yeah no that certainly should it doesn't bear the weight of research it doesn't look like you went out and got information and then put it in. It's very much a lived kind of writing. Um, uh, that there are many flavors of uh, Malayalam in Kerala, right? Even for a small state, there are many ways in which the language is spoken. So is this in the language of the that is that? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this story is happening in a migrant village. So uh, basically, the... Uh, uh, the language I have used is uh, Christian, um, what do you call Christian uh, community, which is usually employed by Christian community. And also the, you know, the uh, a large people over there is uh, Aboriginal people, the Adivasis, and mm -hmm. uh, particularly the Paniya uh, tribe. And I have employed the Paniya language which is actually, you know, a challenge. And um, I, I got the help, support from my friend, uh, from Paniya uh, Sarita Chandran. She helped me to, you know, her uh, in language in, in their own uh, slang. Um, as I have mentioned in the book, it's dedicated to the language with no scripts. That is yeah. the tribal language. They don't have any script. They are uh, they, they write with, uh, Malayalam scripts only. And uh, you, nowadays, this language it's uh, disappearing, disappearing. So um, once we keep the dialect, you know, the uh, language, I think it will support the language as well. Mm -hmm. So is it only the dialogue that? the language you mentioned or the narration? Uh, narration, I think no. I, I, I have not anything, but I have uh, I have picked some words from their, you know, from their language. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't, uh, you know, sound like their, uh, you know. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. And question that's coming. So what did this mean for you as a translator? Yeah, so, um, 
the the main narration is um well, malayalam standard malayalam um also the 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 uh, language as used of the christian communities uh, for me coming from malayalam tamil survey from uh, vainad it it is it's pretty similar you know there are in, i would say that harish's mustache the malayalam that he used is different the language that you know um i would speak those bits were not different what is more interesting is that the christian community just like any community um, ingrained cultural references ingrained ways of speaking so mm-hmm. the difference is not in language or words it's the way called the bible sin throughout right. you know like well, their yeah. metaphors come from bibles their examples come from bible you know and bible is quoted part of a speak yeah. which isn't uh, what my community like mm-hmm. you know so so those were actually quite interesting to work with and in i all, i had to kind of go and find the best bible because there's a million translations of bible in english and i wanted to not translate myself but use a by you know authentic translation of bible bits and so I had to go the bible that most suited uh, to that so that is one thing important thing the use of the paniya language um sheila um, referred to it as a dialect but i call it a language it is a, although it doesn't have a script it is a fully fledged language and as sheila said the book is dedicated one of the dedications is to languages without scripts so from a translator's point of view i could have just translated all of those bits into english mm. kind of pidgin english or whatever to kind of represent whatever but i didn't want to do I wanted to keep the language so in my, in in while writing down the malayalam script so in english what i've done is i have described the the all the dialogue and songs in mm-hmm. in the paniya language and then followed it up with a translation that mostly most of it is embedded in the text rather than you know so Separate. any reader who takes it to read that gets a sense of what this language is like and my example for that was the american uh, uh, dian clancy who wrote pushing the bears so that was my example i did do a, you know kind of look around to see what's the best way of doing it one thing i didn't want to do was to just translate it translate it into an english that then erases the difference between mm-hmm. malayalam and paniya so yeah yeah so it starts get so much more complicated because mm-hmm. on the one hand you're trying thing in a different language on the other end you're trying to maintain the differences in register and the background information have and and subtly convey it to the reader as well so yeah it's it's all very tough but it's all been worth it uh, for sure <laughs> no question about it and so did the usual thing of of trying out passages to see if you were getting the voice was it once you did you stayed with it yeah I, but you know the the book has a lot of character so it wasn't right. you know you know it wasn't really unlike other books where i would you know try sound of the characters yes. etc what i was trying to do here for me, in this book um I even say that this was much easier to translate than some of the books i have worked with however the difficult bit was sheila's own voice and mm-hmm. sheila's own way of writing you know that cannot be lost mm-hmm. so my experiments you know working on big passages here and there is to get that sense of to convey that beautiful lyricism of sheila's writing has to come across that is what i was trying to do in so not concentrating or anamkuti or characters as such but to get a sense get you know get the musicality of sheila's language across that's what i was trying to do with this yeah and so sheila your book came out in when 2019 Yes, uh, 2019. 19. So, in the three years since, what have you been writing? Yeah, in three years, you know, for after completing my book for one year, I couldn't write anything. <laughs> I was just reading. I was caught up in what to get out of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was hard for me to come out of Bali, and uh, you know, I started writing. and novel um, in last we went 
and uh, I can't uh, by now, and it is going to uh, get released this month. Oh, well done. Congratulations. What's it called? It's uh, Do not ask um, the river her name. <laughs> ah, okay. And have you read it already, Jayasri? Yes, I can imagine. Yeah, I have the draft, not the final book. And you're going to be translating it, I hope. We shall see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Jayasree has a bundle of books. Uh, and well, of How many have you got now, Jayasree? How many in the pipeline? There's a few nice ones. I mean, the one um, next one is coming up pretty soon. End of this. I mean, will be finished by end of this year. Yeah, I'm focusing. I, I think I said that to you last time we spoke that the other women writers that I am yeah. focusing on also. Yeah. I mean, as you said, there's just so many good books and you want to do everything, but, you exactly. know, hopefully I will do so by the time I'm of your age. Oops. You totally <laughs> agree. More. Anyway, just, just one, two, choose some slim books. That's how you wait the number. <laughs> <laughs> if everything is the size of moustache and valley, you have to see. <laughs> it's wonderful. Actually, you know, I was talking to Jesse, like 71 translations uh, at the same time working as an as a professor at a reputed university <laughs> when do you get time to read all this and no, but you know, as, yeah but as jesse will tell you you can't translate slowly it's very difficult to translate slow you mm -hmm. can you, you can review but if you if you let the flow stop then you become yourself and you are no longer channeling the writer and that that's the that risk have to do your first draft fairly quickly. At least I do my first draft fairly quickly so that I don't miss lose the voice. Assuming I've got it in the first place. That is. What's your reading like, Sheila? What do you read? Who are the writers whom you admire very much? Who, who do you think we should be reading? Yeah, because that's the only way we'll get to read them. I read a lot of poems like Neru. Um, then uh, Everything is not coming into my and for Malayalam, it is. Uh, I like the style of Sarah Joseph um, and uh, uh, Michael Muhammad Bashir. The you know the the Bepur Sultan. He is the Sultan of Malayali readers, actually. But do you really find him find his writing simple in the sense of I? English translation, it is a, it's pyrotechnics. It's like, it's yeah, like, I think, yeah. I think translating uh, Bashir is the most difficult tasks mm -hmm. that we can do because it, it to read it's simple when you read it, but it is by no yeah. means simple. You know, and the language that he employs, etc. You know, it's uh, for translation. Uh, mm -hmm. Whoever has translated Bashir, I have great admi admiration for them. I, I know. And yes, uh, yes. K.R. Mira is coming up with, you know, every year one book. Uh, really wonderful. I know. <laughs> There's a new translation out which I'm waiting to read, Jezebel. Really? Which is different from her earlier works. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah. What, okay, one last quick question to you, Sheila. Do you, do you place yourself in a tradition of Malayalam writing? Do you feel that there's a particular stream to which you belong? I'm not sure. I don't think so. you know it's something coming out uh, organically. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think the stream and everything you know um, that is all the, what the readers and uh, you know are assigning to on us, right? Yeah, that is that is true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you much. That was a really lovely chat. I think we could have gone on for another hour quite easily. But there it is. So thanks and all the best for your new novel, Sheila, and for your new translation, you so Jesse. But more book is into the world and yeah. uh, and the important thing right now. Yes, in this in the English version. So thanks again and uh, hoping to run into you guys somewhere soon. Now that we are back to chat. Yes, I know. I mean, we've done this. Uh, I think it's time to meet a person. Yes. Yeah.
Thank you, Arunava. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you for doing this. Thank you, Jayashree and Sheila, for reading from your book. And for all the listeners, please do buy copies of Wali. Uh, we will link our online store below. You can buy copies of Wali from Champaka. And we hope you enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.